Hey crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So I can't wait to show you this sewing tutorial that I've got for you today. I had so much fun making these and it is all around making a casserole carrier when you're going to your next potluck or maybe, you know, fall time's coming, some of the holidays are coming, these make great gifts. So I hope you stay tuned while I show you how I like to make my casserole carriers. But hey, if this is your first time stopping by my channel, thanks so much for stopping by. Make sure you click on that subscribe button and click on the bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. Try to do it every Friday. That's why we call it Inspiration Friday. So give me a second. I'm gonna meet you over in the sewing area today and we are gonna get sewing. Okay, crafters, let's get going on this project. So I wanna show you, I have had one of these casserole um, carriers for years and you can see mine has got lots of use. And I, as much as I love it, I didn't like um, how I was storing it. So I started working on how I could design another um, carrier that worked a little bit different. My old one, the handles went this way, so they were really long. So this one opens up, and then in this case, I'm using snaps. The one that we're gonna make today, I'm gonna use some Velcro. But you open it up, and voila, there is your casserole or your nine by 13 pan. The other thing I like about this design is on the back side, I've left it open for a pocket. So if you wanted to put hot pads in there, you sure could. And then from a storage aspect, this is what I really liked about this one, is it stores so nicely because it stores nice and small when I go to put it away. So just by changing my design to have my handles going the other way, it makes it really nice and easy to store in my drawers. Now, having done this one, I have a few things that I'm gonna improve with the pattern that I'm showing you here today. One, this is not a good opening for this rod. It's too little, these will come off very easily. So we're gonna make a smaller opening. Other than that, that's about all we're going to change. So I'm really excited to show you this. Now, the other thing is, I really encourage you to think about a darker fabric on the inside. I don't know about you, but sometimes when you take things places, it might spill a little bit. And so darker side definitely um, covers stains. The other great thing about this, you guys, is you take off these rods, throw it in the wash, and it's good to go. So that's the one we did um, that I did as the test run for you guys. And now let's talk about what you're gonna need for this project. So what I have here is I have picked up some really cute fabric and I've got my pieces already cut. So let's talk about the sizes of pieces you're gonna need. Now I'm going with a lighter color, this cute little farm print on the outside. And this first piece is 40 inches by 10 and a half. So it's really long, 40 inches by 10 and a half. And then I've got an inside piece cut the exact same size, 40 inches by 10 and a half. And then I've got a piece of cotton batting and I'll show you the brand that I always pick up for my cotton batting. And that's also 40 by 10 and a half inches. So I've got those three pieces. And then I've got the same colors of fabric and I've got these in 18 by 28. So one for the outside, one for the inside, 18 by 28, and then my, um, my batting. And my batting that I am using, I always pick it up when I find it on sale, and this is the warm and natural um, batting. I really like how it feels, and I try to always have a little bit of it on supply. The other thing you're gonna want is now, the one that I made yesterday, I used snaps on, but I really wanted to use Velcro for the one closing. So we're gonna go ahead and use, and you wanna make sure you get sew-in Velcro. Do not get the glue one, because if you try to sew it with your needle, you're gonna get glue all over your needle. So we're gonna use sew-on Velcro. 
Now I did use my cutting mat and my rotary blade to cut out my pieces. I just love using my rotary blade. You are gonna want a point turner. This is a clover point turner. I really like it. It's got the rounded side and then the point, but it really helps when we're pushing out those corners. Of course, you're gonna need some thread and a coordinating bobbin. And so I'm just going with a cream color today. And then you are gonna want something circle. I just went in my kitchen and grabbed a bowl and we're gonna use that to cut out where those handles are. And then the last thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need um, some dowels. Now, I wanna show you this handy tool my husband bought for me. I just went to Home Depot and this is a half inch dowel. I think it was $2 and I need them to be 10 inches long. My husband had got me this little tool and it's actually a miter cutter, but I want you guys to see that with a couple presses, and I've already measured this out at 10, with a couple presses, I can cut right through that lickety split. I'll make sure I put a link to this down below. I just love it that I can cut my own wood and I don't have to go grab my husband to do that for me. So let's see, I think we've got everything that we need to get started with. So let's move some of this stuff out of the way. Oh, one other thing I did wanna let you guys know. My measurements are based on, I like buying these Pyrex nine by 13 pans that have the lid on it. So because it has the lid, of course it's a nine by 13, but these handles come out a little bit further. So just so you know, the measurements I gave you are to fit a nine by 13 that's got um, some extra handles out here. You may want to downsize yours a little bit if you don't have them um, um, that, that long. Okay, let's get going. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some layering here. So let's start with, this is the piece that is going to go around the long way of our um, of our casserole container or cover. And so what you wanna do is we're gonna layer this. So we're gonna put right sides together. So I've got right sides together. The fabric's a little long, it's 40 inches, so it's gonna go off camera there. But we're gonna layer this just like this. I'm just measuring it up. And one thing I didn't mention is I always like to have my clips around. So I'm gonna grab out my little container I've got of clips and I'll do a little bit of clipping here, but not yet because there's one more thing we need to put in this layer. We wanna put the batting. And so I'm going to lay that right on top too. And just make sure you got it measured, or excuse me, um, it's matching up. And then throw some clips on. And I like to put my clips um, not, not all over the place, but enough to keep it so when I take it over to the sewing machine, I have it all together. So I'm just gonna straighten that out a little bit. And the one thing, this layering, it seems funny, I know, but we want to be able to do this because this is gonna give us a nice finished sides all the way around our casserole container. We're not gonna have to do any binding tape around this the way that I'm showing you how to make this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that all lined up. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna do some markings for our handles. Now, some people like to cut theirs out. I like to mark mine with a, um, a disappearing pen. That's one thing I didn't show you. Um, I am using disappearing ink pen and I'll put a link down to it also. And then I'm gonna grab that bowl that we had. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab in my ruler. I like to have my ruler handy. And I'm gonna grab my ruler. And so I know this is 10 and a half, okay? So, five and a quarter is gonna be my center. So I'm just gonna mark myself, I'm gonna take those clips out for a minute. I'm gonna mark myself at five and a quarter, both here and here. So I know where my center is, okay? Then what we wanna do 
is we wanna take our bowl, and you're gonna to have to eyeball this, and what you can do to make sure you're right is you could measure. So this is, I think, two and a half inches in, and let's see, I'm gonna have a hard time there. Okay, so I'm three inches in, because my ruler is three inches, and I am, I have to bump that just a little bit, okay? So just about, about right there okay and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pen and I'm gonna go around and I'm not gonna go all the way and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna finish that line up and what that's gonna do is that is what's gonna make our handles okay so I'm gonna go ahead and clip again And just to give you guys an idea of how far that bowl went down, my opening is right at about four and three quarters, okay? So we wanna do the exact same thing on the other side. We wanna match that up. Now this is where some people would say, oh, just cut it right now, you know, and then you can have it match. I just like the idea of sewing right where my bowl is. Uh, I just feel better and I think I get a better cut when I'm doing that, um, a better cut or, or better sewing is what I guess I'm trying to say. Sorry about that. So five and a quarter. So there is my, okay. And we said that was right about four and three quarters inches down, right? So if I go four and three quarter inches down, it's going to be right there. So that's where I know my bowl needs to be. And then we'll just double check our sides. We're right short of three and we are right short of three. So we're doing good there. And we're gonna use our pen and we're just gonna go around. Now always make sure you mark with your pen on the wrong side of your fabric. Disappearing ink shouldn't come back, but I've heard people talk about that it does sometimes. So it's always a good idea just to do it on the wrong side. Okay, so we've got this one all clipped and ready to go. What I'm gonna do, just so I can be um, streamlined a little bit over at my sewing machine, is we're gonna go ahead and do that exact same layer um, with the larger piece, okay? So I'm gonna lay it out, and we are going to put our right sides together again. And then we're going to clip in our clip in our batting. Now, one thing I didn't mention on the other one is we are going to want to leave about a four-inch opening on the sides so we can turn this inside out. So I'll make sure that I go back and do that on the other one, but I'll show you on this one for sure so you guys can see what I'm talking about by an opening. This has got a broken clip there. And so we're just gonna give it a quick couple clips. And if your batting is just a little bit short, don't worry about it. We're gonna catch that all in our stitching. And we're also gonna add a nice top stitch once we turn this all over. So we will have no problems with that. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to take my ruler again and I am gonna do about a four inch opening. So if I mark right there, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do a six inch opening just to make it easy. And then what I like to do whenever I do my opening is I always think about this as the no sew zone, right? So if I put pins, I know it's different than my clips. So let's go ahead and bring that other one back in here really quick. And let's do the same thing. It does not matter where you put your opening. I like to kind of go towards the center though, because this is actually gonna be on the back side of our, um, of our holder. So let's put that ruler going the right number so Lisa can see what number she wants. So if I go with, oops, got that doubled up, Lisa. Don't wanna do both of them. 
So we're just gonna leave a six inch opening there and we'll use that when we turn everything over, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop over the sewing machine and we're on the larger piece, on the fatter piece, we're gonna do a seam starting here, back stitch. We're gonna go all the way around and just about a quarter inch seam. And then on this one, we're gonna do the same thing. Oops, I pinned that one in there. <laughs> we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start at our pin. We're gonna go all the way around. A little bit different though. When we come around here, we're gonna sew on top of where our pin was, okay? Then come back around and finish it all the way around. Then we'll cut out this opening. Okay, so let's hop over the sewing machine and we will get some sewing done. Okay, so we're at the sewing machine and I am putting my needle in the middle position and I'm just gonna start right where that, whoops, I got the second pin. Let's go back up where that first pin is. And I'm gonna use my fabric as my guideline. So it's right a little bit more than a quarter inch, but I'm just gonna use the foot of my um, sewing machine there to be the guide for an even seam. So I'm gonna take that first pin out and I'm gonna put my foot down. And again, I'm just doing a little bit of a stitch and then I'm doing a back stitch. And then take your time here, there's no rush. And you're just gonna go all the way down and we're gonna go all the way down to um, the end here. So let me just do that real quick. Now when I come to that corner, I'm leaving my needle down, I'm gonna lift my foot up and I'm gonna bring this around. And then I'm gonna come right to where that pin mark was. And I'm gonna to try to stop as close to it as I can, leaving my needle down. I'm gonna raise my foot up and I'm just gonna bring my fabric around. And this you wanna go really slow because we wanna sew all the way around where that pin is. Okay, now at this point, you don't wanna go all the way off. You wanna come up to leaving it about a quarter inch, lift your foot and go around. And then we're just gonna continue on and we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side with the other opening. So I'll probably fast forward this and you guys can just watch me do the rest of this. Okay, so we've got that seam all the way around. I'm gonna go ahead and do the larger piece and I'll meet you back over at the cutting table. Okay, so we're back over at the um, cutting table or the pressing table. And I am, I've got my iron off to the side and so I will be giving my seams a nice press. But first what we wanna do is we want to cut out that opening. Now you guys can, probably can't see very clear but it is where that pen line is. I'm gonna go right next to it. I am not gonna cut on it, but I'm just gonna go right next to it. And I am just gonna cut around. And I just think I get a nice smooth cut uh, or nice smooth seam by doing it this way. And then what I'm gonna do is being very careful, I'm just gonna do clips all the way along that um, circle, okay? And this will help make that part of the curve lie a little bit better. I'm just gonna do that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna clip my corners, okay? And then I'm gonna go over on the other side and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. We're just gonna trim that all the way around. And we're going to clip and I like to be really, really careful when I'm doing this clip, 
because you do not want to hit that seam. We are going to give this a nice press and then we are going to give it a top stitch on the other side. Just really gives a nice finished look to your carrier when you do the top stitch. So I'm just clipping those corners. And then sometimes I just like to go around and see where some of my batting came out. Just like to trim off that extra bulk. Just helps when we're doing the turn. And then let's go ahead and turn this one inside out. But first, I'd like to give these seams just a little bit of a press. The other thing that I just love seeing is, see how that ink all went away? You can't even see where that ink was. That's why they call it disappearing ink, right? Let's go ahead and do that. Some people, a lot of quilters really swear by what they call setting the seam when you give it a good press. So that's basically what I'm doing before I get it turned. And I see I missed a corner there. It's also a nice idea of why you want to give it a press. You kind of give your pattern a look over. Okay, let's go ahead and I'm gonna have my clover piece ready to go. And what I'm gonna do is, now we've got the three layers, I'm gonna turn it inside out this way. And the tricky part is these ends. So I'm gonna push it all through first so we can get it all the way out. And then those little ends are a little tricky and that's where I like to use my clover little turning tool because I can get those out really nice. So you just have to work it. It's gonna take a little bit to get these out. I like to do it from the front first and then I'll put that it in there. So I go to my opening and now I like to use this end to get that end piece out. And one of the reasons why I like to do that is it's, I don't take the chance of poking a hole um, through with that. The other side is so pointy. And so see how this one just pushes those corners out really nice. And see how quick and easy that was? Now we'll just do the other side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll get the other one turned. We're gonna clip its corners also. It doesn't have these little arms to have to deal with. So this one just takes a little bit more to get pressed out. And this one I didn't press out as much first. I'm just trying to do it with my clover. And sure enough, it's pointing right out. So I'm turning it to with the corner piece. Try to get those corners out because we're gonna bend these corners over and they're gonna make the home for our dowels that are gonna make our carrier. Okay, got that nice and good. So now what we wanna do is you wanna really work those edges. And we want to press it so I like to work the edges really nice. And then I have my iron, I always have my iron up to heat. And then what I do is as I just let that iron sit there for a minute, I start working next to it. We're just gonna go through and get all of this, a really nice press. And then we've got that opening on the other side. And when we do our top stitch, we will close up that opening. So if you be really careful and give this, um, take your time folding this over, you won't have any of your inside showing on the top part. Nothing wrong with it, a little bit of it showing. I mean, we've got kind of a, a coordinating color there. But also see what I mean by, because we made those clips, look how nice that lays. I'm just gonna go down this edge, and now this edge is where we've got that opening. So we're almost to the opening. So what I like to do there is, I like to get on one side, and then just kind of pull it tight. that up so you guys can see it but that is our opening right there so just by giving it a good press there you go I'm gonna make it nice and straight and same thing we're gonna do with this one 
look at that, you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the other one inside out. I can definitely see that it needs some trimming. So we're gonna set this off to the side for just a second. I'm just gonna fold it up really quick. We're gonna take this one over to the sewing machine and we're gonna do a top stitch. But first, let's do a little bit of trimming here because I've got a lot of excess I can see when we did this, which is not a problem at all. And you don't have to trim it. I just recommend you trim it because that way you're getting rid of some of that extra bulk when you get ready to turn your corners. So I'll get this one turned. I'm gonna give it a press and then we will get going on the rest of this project. Okay, so I'm gonna take both of these pieces and I'm gonna go do a top stitch all the way around and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I did my top stitching and I went all the way around. It might be easier to see on the back side with the contrasting thread, okay? So what we want to do now is we wanna get ready for our handles. So let's put the bigger piece off to the side for a minute. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull in our handles and one, now that the, the sewing is done, I'm, I like to make sure that my handles are gonna work. And I can see right away that my handles are a little bit too long at 10 inches, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I am going to grab my pin, if I can see it. Never, never fails that Lisa loses it. Grab a different pin. And I am going to just look at these and I'm coming in just a little bit from this seam and just a little bit here. So really you guys, you could have waited to cut your dowels to this point. Cause sometimes they just need to be adjusted a little bit, but I get to show you my cool tool again. How fun is that? Now, the other thing I like to do at this point in time is we are going to fold over just so I know that the dowel is going to fit in there nice and snug. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out and I want to show you guys from a measurement how far I am. Let me put the ruler going the right way. It is right about one and three quarters. Okay. So one and three quarters inch down and I'm just going to put a clip on either side. So then what I'm going to do is just do the same on the other side. So we'll just measure down one and three quarters and get my ruler in here. Right at one and three quarters. As easy as that. Now, one thing I did figure out on my test run is I originally just did a stitch right across here. But what I've determined I want to do, and I'm going to double check those measurements. That doesn't look quite right. Is I'm actually going to go cross and up. And that way the rod won't have anything to go um, to run out with. So I got to double check. That does not look right. Actually, that's one and a half, Lisa. So let's make that match up right. Because it sure doesn't look the same. There we go. That looks a little bit better. So one and a half makes sense because I got a half inch dowel. Okay, so that looks just about right. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So we'll just use our ruler and we'll come down one and a half inches. I love this ruler because I can go both directions on it. My camera stand keeps getting in the way so I can't spread it out because it is an 18 inch ruler. So it's a nice, nice long one. So that is right at one and a half. So perfect. So we're gonna go over to the sewing machine. And like I said, I am going to do a stitch along the outside and then right through here. And what I like to do is try to follow where I did my top stitch, just right on top of that. And that will give a nice secure place for our dowels to go. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got those all stitched. And let's just double check that our dowels are gonna fit in there nice. Might have to squeeze it out a little bit, but look at that. Those just work out perfect. So 
definitely might need to adjust your dowels just a little bit. Oh, did I not cut both of them? I sure didn't. Well, that's not going to work, is it? Let's go ahead and mark that one. Actually, let's see if I can just do it just like that. I definitely like my little tool. Okay, let's get those dowels in. So you guys, we are just about done. We're gonna add some Velcro and we're gonna hook our two pieces together and we are gonna be set. So it comes together really quick. It's definitely a good afternoon project, something that you can do. Okay, we are doing great, you guys. So now what I wanna do is I am, while it's still folded, I am going to just put a clip right where my center is. So when I open it up, I know where the center is. And then what we're gonna do is, we want this on the bottom because this is how we're gonna carry our, um, this is how we're gonna carry it. And so it's gonna fold up like this, just like that. So you can kind of just get a feel for how that is. And what I like to do is take my ruler and this is 17 inches. So that would be eight and a half is gonna be my center. So if I just make sure that I am, I am almost spot on, look at that. Perfect. So I got that nice and centered where I'm at. I'm gonna remove those two clips and I'm just gonna open it up and I'm gonna put a clip in the corner. Now, what I like to do is we are going to have a pocket that we can use. And so what I wanna do is I want my pocket to be on the inside here, okay? So actually what I'm gonna do is I am only gonna sew a seam down here and I'm gonna sew a seam down there. That way I can slide things in on either side. If I wanted to put like some serving spoons in there, or I actually thought I've got some leftover fabric, I'm gonna make some matching hot pads to go with this. So I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine right now, and I'm just gonna do a seam right down there. And actually, you guys, I'm gonna do it on my sewing machine from this direction, flipping it over, and I'm gonna follow along where my top stitch is. Okay, so just straight across there and straight across here. Sorry, can't see both my lines. So straight across here, just matching up to my corners and straight across here. Okay, that's gonna allow me to have a pocket on the other side. So I'll be right okay, back. So I have it all sewn together. I've got a nice little pocket in here. And what I like to do to measure for my Velcro is I like to bring my um, nine by 13 back in and I like to just wrap it and kind of see how everything's gonna fit. And then look at this, this is so cute, you guys. Oh, I just love how this one turned out. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to grab my sew um, tape. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it out and, okay, so we've got two pieces of Velcro. We've got the soft side and we've got the bristly side, okay? And I just like to use just about two inches. You really don't need much more than two inches um, for this because you just want it to be secure. So you're gonna do two pieces of two inches of the soft side, okay? So we'll put that off to the side. And then we're gonna do two inches of the rough side. And we're just gonna place these together. Excuse me, we're gonna place these underneath our little cover there and guess what, you guys? Our casserole is going to be all done. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to, I like to leave enough play here in case maybe I had a lid or maybe this is, I'm not using my lid and I'm using tin foil. So I'm gonna go a little loose in here. So I've got just a little bit of a carryover there and I'm going to put it right about there. Actually, I'm gonna bring it in a little bit. Okay, so we'll give you the exact measurements on that in just a second where I'm placing it. But you guys can just play with it a little bit. I'm just gonna put a pin in there to hold it. 
So I am coming in about four inches exactly from the end. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And I'm starting out with the rough side. You guys can start out with whichever side works best for you. But I'm just gonna put a pin right in there, okay? And then what we wanna do is since we know we came in four inches, now this is gonna, this goes on the inside piece, right? And this is gonna go on the outside piece. So we're just gonna come in four inches with it. And then we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew all the way around it, securing it to the container. And where did we lose one at? There it is. Let's turn that around so I got the right numbers. And we're at four inches. Looks just about right. And what I'll do is I'll lay that other one just so we can see it too. And so when we come all across like this, we see that we're gonna match up just fine, okay? So let's hop over the sewing machine and let's give this a sew all the way around all four pieces. And guess what? Our cute little carrier is going to be done. Okay, so when you're sewing around Velcro, you just really want to make sure you get on the edge. And so I like to use the inside of my foot kind of as my guide. And then I'm just going to, sometimes I like to sink my needle first so I can see exactly where I'm at. And then I put my foot down and then I'm just going to do a little stitch and then I'm gonna do a back stitch. And all we're gonna do is go all the way around that Velcro. And again, remember you guys, I'm using so Velcro. I am not using any that's got any tape or anything on it because I don't want my needle all gummed up. So when I come to those corners, all I'm doing is sinking my needle, leaving it in the down position, raising my presser foot and coming around. And you just kind of have to manhandle your um, fabric through your machine, through the neck part of your machine because you're going all the way around. Do a little back stitch. And that's as easy as that, you guys. So I'm gonna do all four of these and then I'll show you our finished product. So we're back from the sewing machine and let's put together our cute little container. Look at that cover. That just, that Velcro works really nice, gives it a nice secure and you are ready to go and you can pick up and go to your next, um, your next um, potluck. And one thing I do like to do, you guys, is go around and make sure you get all your little threads for sure. Now, don't forget, the one fun thing about this, too, is we've got that pocket in there. So don't forget about the pocket. Now, I know these don't match, and Lisa's going to make some matching ones for sure, but I just want to show you what I mean. So say you're going to a potluck and you want to put in some of your hot pads. You could put a hot, hot pad in there. And I could probably get one in on this side. And then how many times do you get to a potluck and you, you don't have a serving spoon? So you could even put your serving spoons in there, just like that. Then let's put our pan in, do it up, and look at that. Ready to go, you got serving spoons and everything. How cute is that? Just love how this turned out. Can't wait to make some for Christmas gifts. So let me know what you guys think. Please give it a thumbs up. I'm so glad you joined me for another Inspiration Friday. And I hope you make a casserole or hot dish cover.